<laughs> hey hey welcome back to the channel it's awesome that you're tuning in so in this video we are going to do a quick recap of the previous month of stuff and yeah there was a lot of stuff i've reviewed because i tried to do an every single day a new video and i must say like when you deep dive into the aliexpress jungle with all kinds of products you can find some interesting ones but a lot of the same stuff yeah, so I noticed like a lot of you were like replying like, hey, it's the same stuff like 2021. Yeah, don't even start how I feel sometimes about it because yeah, when you're reviewing one product, sometimes you've reviewed, let's say, 10 different ones because they are using a lot of similarities when it comes to chipsets. And yeah, okay, that one's falling. But the point is, is like when you go looking at the game box, but all the handheld, so it did improve a lot. Um, sometimes a little bit too negative about it, but I just want to do a quick recap about my one of my favorite products that I've checked out in the last month. And just doing a quick recap of these products. And if you maybe missed it out, go check it out. So we're going to pile it up like Tetris over here. This month was not everything AliExpress. We did review a couple of weird old plug and plays, including a new Geo Mini. We talked about it, if it's still worth in 2022. We also did a recap of the arcade machine because we had some new features and we have reviewed, I wanna say one of the best, but one of the better ones when it comes to the NES NES and mini versions of the Sega clones. And now of course we're having a mini arcade and many more stuff including a PlayStation 5 Mini from Aliexpress that can play a lot of retro games. I think when you're looking at all of these products, and oh man, oh man, I've reviewed way too much if you ask me sometimes, but there were some interesting things, including the golden game box one that has basically like the same like the other one. Like they're basically relabeling and sometimes even using it like in a different name. And that's also the thing that happens to handhelds. But doesn't even matter. Let's do a quick recap of what products I liked that month. The A6 game box basically is a very interesting product. Comes with the S95 X3 chip, one of those many ones we've reviewed. But this particular one, I really like the design. Not because of the superb cooling, because that is another problem with these things. It's particularly the way just how it looks and basically how you can place it underneath or on the top of your monitor. It comes with the S905 X3 and it is quite okay. So one of those more like faster chips you can get in game boxes. But what does it mean when it comes to emulation? Let's talk about that too. Okay, so the first thing that I found quite interesting is the shape of the box. It's something completely different. So there was not a lot of information on the box besides that this like weird, let's say, thing that you need to be careful about some certain things. But when you're looking at the back, here we're going to see like the differences. So this device needs to be on top of your monitor if you want to, or you can also like put them on the bottom. The style, I really like it. Also, it comes with them different controllers. And when I say the controllers, let's talk about it first, because that is quite interesting. So we're not going to get ourselves the typical PlayStation to do knockoff chemical controllers. Now we're going to get ourselves knockoff controllers on the Xbox One. And I must say like this is not to be compared with the original quality. This is like a feeling really cheap. I think there's not even rumble in these things. But when you're looking at the overall quality, especially when you enjoy sticks, and it feels so much better than your PlayStation controls. I'm a big fan of the Xbox controller, so I'm very happy to begin with. So the feel is absolutely cheap. The trigger feels okay. You got like this cheap feel to it. We do have like the A, B, M, X, L, Y buttons. They are like also very long travel, but cheap feel to it. The D-pad feels clickish. But feels very nice. We do have a mode, select start, and some two extra buttons. The joystick, that's where we're going to get like the most impressive thing of these Knuckles controllers. You got this a very nice, like nice, nice original controller touch to it. But also the joysticks feel very nice. I think the best feature of this controller is basically the shell and the joysticks. But okay, so let's look at the system itself. So in today's video, we're not going to get ourselves like a remodeled or an old TV box slapped in a new case. No, this is something completely different. Okay, but let's take a close look at the console. To begin with, this thing is very lightweighted. So I'm curious with the teardown, what are we going to get in the inside? That's absolutely something we're going to do. This thing 4K Ultra HD, but take consideration the games and everything runs on native resolution most of the times. So we're not going to even use or getting in close to the 4K. It's just basically like the game box. But there is no like showing what kind of model it is. What you're going to get over here is the basically the extra unit at the bottom so we can position it on top of the television and just leave it there. Quite interesting concept, something you didn't see before. Okay, so here we're going to get ourselves the CF card. Take consideration like they are using kind of weird brands that I've seen before or didn't. So this is an 
unique brand or they get themselves like the unique own label take consideration backup these things because if it's getting corrupted somehow you always have a backup and you can just upgrade it with a different or better sd card so what we're going to get more is an hdmi connection do have two usb ports for the controllers and then of course the input type c all right so let's take a close look in the box because i completely forgot to show you something of course we're going to get ourselves a type c cable and have an hdmi like your normal typical quality they did provide you a metal or this time it's not like really toilet paper metal it's a very nice deluxe one gives you an explanation what the menu looks and how everything works so that's a very nice thing there is only no power supply and I think the reason is this thing works on five volts. So the idea behind it is like two amps, you can plug in this cable in your television. I wouldn't really recommend it. I would say grab yourself like a normal, let's say phone charger. Uh, they are not very expensive. And before I forget, also a 2 card reader. It's always handy. But 2 do come on man, who uses that? So what I do like that we're going to get ourselves one dongle and two controllers configuration. So that means if you're going to bear yourself like an extra pair, you only need to have like one USB connection for the other dongle. And you can just play with freaking four players. Otherwise you need to have like an USB hub and it's going to be like dangling all around. I really hate that. Okay, so I must say that I'm using a very old school monitor over here. But let's try this out. Let's see how this fits. So in, it fits very well. And the reason why I really like it, so when you're looking at this over here, we're going to get all kinds of rubber to protect it for scratching and also gives you like an extra grip. So let's plug in on the television. I just think it's pretty damn cool. But let's take a close look at the software itself. So this is not your typical MULX slash TV Android box that they made. This is something unique beside the point that you can put this thing on top of your television. I think it looks pretty cool. And maybe this will be one of these boxes that you can use very often. And yeah, and that I'll have this, this box in the way. And it doesn't look that bad anyway. All right, so let's take a close look at the software itself. It's a typical software that I've seen before, only slightly different and not in a good way. So at the right part, which you can see over here, we do have the naming, but it scrolls from left to right. And it's a little bit of a difficult thing to read and search for your game, simply because not everything has been displayed. For example, having here F0X. So F0X is a short name, so you can read it. But like say all the other ones, you need to wait for it to start scrolling. A Little bit of a bummer. So next up, we do have history or basically what you have played before. Then we have the collection, says fire, or better said like the favorites. We do have the search function. Let's see how this actually works. Let's see how this works. It works a little bit slow in my opinion, all right. And then we do have like the category and here we have like a quick overview of what we can play with it. They're even like freaking three pages. Or that's what it's saying, there it is. And let's take a close look, what can we play? Okay, so the first page we have PlayStation Portable, PlayStation 1 and 64, Game Boy Classic, MAME, Famicom, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Classic, the Mega Drive or Genesis. Then we have Super Famicom, Atari 20, 2600, 7800. Then we have like Mega Drive, Game Gear, Neo Geo Pocket. So even PC Engine in here and they have another SNES. And I think like there's a problem with like basically double SNES list, but there are like different regions. So it's a little bit confusing and a little bit messy. But what is interesting, pressing select in the main menu brings you to the settings. So here we can change out the freaking language to begin with. So the weird thing is like it has been set to English, but there's even like some European languages and like Dutch, Deutsch, kind of interesting to be honest. But the only thing I have noticed, like you see the bottom row over there, there still has been set to not English. So that's a little bit of a bummer. But another thing I do like is view native files, so you can just mess around with it, don't do that too much. If you delete something, you mess it up. Here you can change out the sound effects, I'm going to put it on mute. The thing is like, we do have full screen and equal scale mode, or nevertheless, we do have original express ratio that we're going to set it on because I want to see what if that works. About the native information or the system information. So this is basically the first version they've released. Okay, so let's go to the exit setup and let's see what we're going to get with some gameplay. All right, so the first thing that we're going to boot up is PlayStation Portable. You can see like somehow it doesn't always shows it, but it seems to be showing the on-screen input. Press the mode button. Here we can go to settings. Frame skips has been set to one, which you can see over here. I'm not surprised because these things are too underpowered for playing it on full speed. But let's see if we can get rid of the freaking like yeah, show FPS counter, please. That's all something I wanted to do. 
and let's see if I can go into the controls and change out that we can get rid of the on-screen controls yep there he is all right continue and there we have it all right so let's take a close look at some gameplay there is no music kind of interesting this is the first time actually that I don't have this game with some music okay so we do have like 30 fps all right so let's see how far it drops down 22 yeah, so you know, these boxes are not great to place on PlayStation Portable. There will be games playable, but... And this is even like trading stage, if you're going to get a stage with a lot of stuff going on in the background. You're going to have like a pretty now horrible emulation performance. But in consideration, I'm playing two-dimensional games. There are some games that will run okay. Okay guys, so next up let's play some PlayStation 1 and I must say like these devices are more than powerful enough to run PlayStation 1. Doesn't matter what you throw at it, this is done wipeout, but basically if you're going to get yourself a Body Roar 2, if you configure it correctly with the right emulator, it works just fine. Downside is there is no background music and did it shut it down, it was like as is. And the only thing I do is like put a different file on it. Because this is something they also do like removing the soundtracks, maybe it's dual space. They're thinking like slap up the games without music, sp save some games, space and just add some new games to it. It's kind of interesting to see like they're doing this all the freaking time. Pressing the mode button, what you're going to get is an option to have a quick load, quick save over here. Mess around with the controls because this is basically running on the same software that we've seen before with a Pow Kitty mini arcade machine. Okay, so next up, N64. But even this is an S905 X3, it's not powerful enough to run every single N64 game. We need to have like a mini PC, you can even see some weird glitches going on. You can hear it stutters. If you can't hear it, I tell you, it stutters like crazy. Wow. But this is the thing, like, why should you even, like, bother adding stuff to it that doesn't run anyway? Oh, there we go. Oh, and there it was. When you're looking at the specs, it's quite old. It's nothing really fancy. But what I did like about it is just it is a metal version. It looks very durable. And also it comes in a beautiful display. And this thing, if you just want to play some old games, I think it had a lot of potential. The GKD Mini Metal Edition. I also reviewed the normal version, but the metal is just this extra quality touch that I personally really like. I love to collect these metal handhelds. I don't have all of them, but I do have a couple of them in the collection. And this is absolutely a pretty damn cool device. And I just wanted to add this one to, let's say, the quick recap because this thing is so cool and this thing can play a lot of awesome stuff you know like i think embernick was one of those brands that started like basically making these like metal editions and i personally really love it it gives a very nice sturdy feeling to it and even despite this thing is not the most powerful hunt that you can get i think this thing still deserves something in like a top 10 or maybe top 20 handhelds because it has a lot of great things to offer so when you're looking at the specification list, yeah, there is nothing really fancy about this. Because, especially when you're looking at the CPU, GPU, it's like nothing really fancy and you will see it back in the emulation performance. Maybe in the future or maybe there's already some software out there, I just want to grab it out of the box just to show you what you're going to get. About the box, what are we going to get more? We're going to get ourselves like the metal, the toilet paper metal, deluxe edition, and with a lot of, let's say, FAQ and stuff like an overview, yeah, nothing really fancy, but there are some information that you can help out if you have some problems. And of course, the Type-C cable and Type-C. Yeah, I love it. Okay, so one thing is for sure, if you're holding this thing in your hand for a very long time, you're going to get yourself like a beefcake ham, because yup, this thing weighs quite heavy. It weighs 228 grams, so it's not like that extreme heavy, of course. So the thing is, like, if you're looking at the Steam Deck, for example, the things weigh quite heavy, and of course, it's way bigger. And that's where we're going to get the biggest difference. So having that 228 grams in your hand as a tiny pocket beast, yeah, that makes this thing quite, let's say, compact, but still very heavy. But to give you an example, like another tiny one, is the Mio Mini version 1, that weighs 107 grams. But when you're looking at the Mio Mini, this is absolutely like a completely different story. This thing is absolutely mini, compared with the GKD Mini. 
Well, what are we going to get when it comes to controls and everything you can do with it? To begin with, we do get a shelf like the D-pad. There is no analog stick and I'm a big D-pad fan, so I am completely happy with this. So the feeling itself, it's quite sturdy. It's a long travel D-pad. So we do get like the select start two function button over here and do have like the ABXY. The ABXY are very small and let's say they got like an you know, okay press to it. At the back we're going to get ourselves four shoulder buttons. So the L1, L2, R1 and R2 are basically positioned in a very interesting way. But we have seen like in previous videos some have even like some height difference simply because it gives you more comfort when holding it and playing around like getting in let's say pressing the outer ones the l1 and rl r21 are not like really bad but i must say that when you're looking at it and trying it it's not the best thing that i have ever felt not the biggest fan of it but it can personally be me okay at the top we're going to get the option for two sd cards they are using this for a very long time now one for the firmware and the other one you can extend it with some extra games then we have like the auto switch over here that you hold apart a couple of seconds for turning it on and then at the bottom we're going to get stereo speakers, type C connection and an audio jack. At the left we're going to get two action buttons and that's it. So basically, and of course the volume control. Yeah, okay, almost forgetting the volume control. Because this is not like typical for every handheld. Sometimes you have like body configuration that you're pressing select and up and down and stuff like that. The one thing I do like about it is the display. The display looks amazing, but also when you're looking at the measurements, of course, when you're holding it side by side with an, let's say, a Mio Mini, we're going to get such a big difference. Yeah, but then we're going to talk about it maybe later. For now, just focus on the GKD Mini. So you do have like your old school open Dingux menu. You do have like some special apps. So think about Doom, Zelda clones, Street of Rage remake, you name it, even so Quake 1, Quake 2. So when it comes to the emulators, this thing has not say something extra to offer with your typical one. You can pick up your GKD mini normal version, but this thing does have like a lot of great things to offer. Think about 8-bit, 60-bit stuff. That stuff will run just fine on it. Unfortunate, the emulator that runs stock on this does have some minor issues here and there. The audio quality is quite good and goes very loud. Something I did notice with this D-pad that it's absolutely amazing for fighting games. Handicaps. I can really enjoy the soundtrack. Let's crank up the volume. There's nothing to crank up because it's the loudest setting. Yep. So the audio is not going super loud, but it's loud enough. I do get this very nice stereo effect, especially when you're playing some Genesis. It looks and it also sounds amazing. Okay, so another thing I really like playing on this is, of course, the old school Game Boy games. They look amazing. But if you want to mess around with the menu, we do have like, the option to get into the emulator yourself. Something you don't have with the really cheap, the cheap, cheap handhelds. You can mess around with the scaler. You can even show the FPS if you want to. With the scaling, you can even like get yourself like a special bezel, stuff like that. Another platform you don't see very often is Sega 32X. Especially on the cheap handhelds. Great test to show you that this audio on the device absolutely crazy. It even hurts my ears, the sound, because it's so sharp. So let's lower the volume a little bit.
Okay, so for the final part, I just wanted to try out some Bloody Roar 2. And this is absolutely like the benchmark game for PlayStation 1. But I also have noticed like when you're looking at some different games, they run perfectly. But the overall performance is not bad at all. But this is basically like the highest that it can play. No second ring gas Saturn or whatsoever. Despite that, of course, the hardware cannot even run it. The software is not capable of running it either. Of course, I always needed to try out Street of Rage Remake, one of my favorite games to play when it comes to homebrew. It runs very nice, it runs on the full speed. Another thing I've noticed, like this thing also is capable of having rumble function and it works perfectly with this game. There's a lot of, like, a lot of cool features that this thing has to offer. A vibration function is pretty damn cool. Okay, and the product that I was quite interested in, it was the Magic Cube. I reviewed it, let's say the first edition back in the day, and I was not very flabbergasted about it. But this one, I'm still not flabbergasted about it, because it's still like the same stuff that I've seen before, but it had some interesting specifications and also cool things you can play with it. And that's also the reason why I want to do a quick recap about it. They are saying that this device is more like a multimedia device nowadays, so we can play games, uh, listen to your music and watch a video. So, but the question remains like, what are the functionalities when it comes to online or is it just like an offline product? Okay, so the brand itself is basically like video game machine. Yeah, okay, or product name. And the model is the M12, or the brand is basically this logo. Like maybe it's better the next time they just basically give you like a real name, the mini HD game box. And comes with one handle, USB line, one HD line, and the construction instructions. Like it's quite interesting to see like how they configure everything. All right, so let's open it up and let's take a close look at the inside. So here do we have like the device itself. So far I can see there was nothing new over here. So what was quite interesting with the first model, we had like a built-in speaker at the bottom. The on and off switch, that's something quite rare to be honest. Like we don't have like these on and off switches every single time. And mini HDMI function. So it's quite interesting to use the mini version, the SD card, and of course the type C connection for the charge volume control and two USB ports. So nothing really fancy. They said I was only going to get one controller, but they did send me two of them. Okay, so let's see what kind of controls we're going to get. They also like sold back in the day with Xbox controllers, but nowadays we do get this one. And these are not bad at all. So I've reviewed them some time ago and I can say like these controllers are absolutely, I love them. I'm just gonna be honest, like these are like the next level of, let's say fake ones. You can just feel the buttons are like way better quality. They have like a very nice travel. They're still very high when it comes to the positioning. They have like a very long travel, but what's quite interesting, I hope you can see it from this angle, like the way they position two together, like they're all like strangely like positioned, something I've never seen before. The D-pad is not like your typical D-pad, it's the floating D-pad. We have seen it before, but I personally really like this because, not because it's a little bit higher than normal D-pads, but this display is just amazing. Home button, feel a little bit cheap, select start, and you're just going to get yourself like your typical, like, Analog joysticks, shoulder buttons. Yeah, so I really like it. There's no turbo function. I know like there are a lot of controls, controls that I have turbo function built in. That's very convenient with the system if you want to play some Schmipt, for example. And that old thing that we need to, oh, what we don't need to forget. Let's take a close look at this. So there is no freaking five volt charger. So I'm guessing I'm gonna get myself like a phone charger. Take consideration. Someone like posted some time ago saying like, hey, take consideration there are like fast chargers. You need to be careful. That was a good point he said. Comes with the right cable, so let's plug it in the television. Ooh, forgetting the most interesting part, of course, <clears throat> the toilet paper manual, the luxe edition. So you can see, like, it comes with a very nice manual, and it doesn't explain a lot, but it explains more than enough. But let's take a close look at the device. Okay, so how do we boot it up? So we need to hold the on and off switch for quite a long time, a couple of seconds. So when you're doing it right, it will show you a red and a blue LED, both powering on. And that's it. Within a couple of seconds, we boot up straight in the main menu. And this is something we've seen before. They were not lying about the multimedia functionality. We do get game, movie, music, theme, settings, image, file, and history. 
We have seen this before with mini arcades we've reviewed a very long time ago. So let's take a close look at languages. Oh yeah, the English. So you know like a lot of typos, but we do have like a lot of different languages, even Deutsch and stuff like that. But there's no like my native language is not over here. So display, that's quite interesting to do a full screen and equal proportion. So it's basically the original XPS ratio. So let's put it on there. So let's see where with the open speaker, we can turn it on and off. So does the internal speaker, does inside us the thing. And here we have clear, restore and system information. And this model is called the MX330 version 1.1. And I'm thinking this 2000A. So I'm guessing this is not like the latest model. So let's see what we're going to get with the games. But the games do have like very nice pictures. We do have like Arcade, Famicom, Game Boy, Game Gear, Game Boy Color. It's kind of weird, like they shown in Game Boy Color within Game Boy SP. All right, Game Boy Advance. And this is absolutely messed up, like when it comes to the name. Like they spelled game wrong on PlayStation 1 and Super Famicom. So let's try a couple of games and you'll see how it runs. All right, so they didn't mess it up with the expert ratio. Okay, so let's try this game out. But so far I can see, like, it seems to be running just fine. So when you go and pressing the select to start at the same time, we do have the option to make an, let's say, a quick pass to the quick menu. And here we do have like quick to RetroArch because basically what this thing is running on, a restart, input, and they will have like an option to make a quick load, quick save. So I think that's pretty damn cool. All right, next up, NES. All the signs effects are here. So also the NES part seems to be running just fine. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, so next up. The reason why I'm listening to the soundtracks, you can just hear sometimes they messed it up big time. No sound delay. You just see some weird glitching over there at the right part of the screen, but. But so far, so good. All right. Okay, so next up, let's take a close look at Sega Game Gear. And of course, take consideration, we're going to stretch it out, but it will keep this original aspect ratio. I'm not going to put it even on widescreen to bother because it looks absolutely hideous. Okay, so next up, I wanted to try some Mega Drive. The first impression that it seems to be running just flawlessly. Everything like the sound effects. You can hear everything seems to be working just fine. Let's move on to Neo Geo Arcade. And also this seems to be running just fine. What a person really love about this controller, navigating with the D-pad works perfectly. Okay, so when it comes to Super Nintendo, they mess it up all the freaking time with this particular game. But, but what you can see over here, also this part seems to be working fine. And I'm guessing because they were using RetroArch with the right emulators, they configured everything like it should be. Combination with the right controller, it plays amazingly. The popular Mio Mini was back with version number two. I must say when I unboxed it, I was more like, why didn't they do that freaking the first place with a better display and all these improvements? But yeah, that's how it goes nowadays. 
doesn't spoil the fun. Because version 1, but also this version 2, I really liked it. I picked it up and I was excited, especially when I powered it on. Because this thing is absolutely awesome and had a lot of new stuff to offer. And if you didn't have a Mio version 1, this may be a great opportunity. But I think consideration, I find a little bit of a bummer. What I said, like, why didn't they do that in the first place? Because if you're having bought a number 1, yeah, you were stuck with a number 1. And the number 2 was well, not like a big upgrade, especially when you're looking at the specifications. It's your hard earned money and then you basically like have an old model. I think that's pretty damn freaking annoying. But they are selling this thing in a couple of different colors. I really love the translucent. You also have the blue one and the black version you're seeing over here. I want to say that I almost bought the blue one, but I'm more like, yeah, the black one's maybe a little bit better. Nevertheless, this thing comes with new features, also like a new display and some minor improvements. Later on, we're also doing side by side. There was no box. That's it. Like we do get some wipes. And let's see what we're going to get over here. What the hell? Guide stickers. Dust absorber. Okay. And even going to get ourselves like a screen protector. That is very nice. We do get the toilet paper manual like always. Or better said like this. The deluxe edition. Here you can see like everything has been explained very well. And they did an amazing nice job with this. I just want to point out is like... When you're looking at these devices, there is so much stuff you can change out. I just want to do a quick unboxing here, just to see what are you going to get out of the box, because there are like some custom firmware already out there. And there are some fellow YouTubers like Retro Gamecore that make some awesome like videos about those. But nevertheless, we're going to talk about it later. For now, let's close this very cool tiny protection box. Because you need to contain the beast, the immolation beast. And let's take a close look at the handheld itself. The Mio Mini reminds me of a Game Boy. And maybe you also have this, maybe you're not. Let me know in the comments. But it's tiny, it's mini, absolutely. This is what portable means. Like, this is like really uncomfortable to play. And how is the quality in general? Okay, so when you're looking at this Mio Mini, this is not like the most powerful handheld out there. No, this is something that is like in the middle range, if you ask me. Specification wise, it's like with the display pretty damn nice. It's of course a very tiny display compared with your typical handheld because it's a very mini handheld held but the overall quality i think it's a pretty cool device to have in the collection and to bring with you because it's so mini it's so easy to bring with you let's be honest like some of the handhelds are getting really big nowadays so at the front we're going to get ourselves your a b x and y configuration select and start and then we do get the d-pad as a big fan of D-pads, I'm very pleased that they added a D-pad because with my previous videos, I even seen like some handhelds only having an analog stick. Of course, there was no space for an analog stick and I'm happy they choose for the D-pad. It feels very nice and that is something that I'm very pleased with. So at the side, we're going to get ourselves a volume control. Pretty damn cool. That is not the normal with every handheld, especially when it comes to this size. Some handhelds I've reviewed in the past, you need to have like button configuration, like pressing select and then up and down. It's not a big of a deal, but I personally really love like to have just a physical button or scrolling wheel for it. So we are at the top, we're going to get that on and off switch. When you're pressing it, you can see over here, we do have some LEDs. And at the right side, we don't have anything. But at the back, there we're going to get some very interesting things. We do have the information about the Mio Mini. It doesn't say like what kind of version, a little bit confusing. So when you're buying it, you need to be very careful which one you buy. And then we do have like the L and R and the L2 and R2. Okay, so the battery. The Mio battery that you're going to get will give you a couple of hours of playtime. If you want to bring an extra one with you, that is possible. You can replace it fairly easy. You just pull it out and plug out the cable over here. So take consideration, this is then a 2000 milliamp. It's not like a gigantic one. And there's not like a lot of space for a big one. So there are some limitations over here. At the bottom, what you're going to get is the Type-C connection for connectivity and, of course, data transfer and charging. Then we do have, like, the SD card input over here. And at the bottom, we're also going to get ourselves an audio jack out. So it seems to be that the new Mio Mini has even a better display than the previous one. That is something we're going to do in side-by-side -side comparison. But for now, let's play some games and let's take a close look at the menu itself. Take consideration, this is your typical menu that you're going to get when you try basically pull it out of the box. There are some, let's say, tutorials out there for like even upgrading it and getting maybe some better performance. So what I like about this device, we do have like an option for so many like basic systems. Stuff we do have seen many times before. But this Mini has, in my opinion, enough to offer for the price that you need to pay for it. Alright, so let's try some 8-bit. Of course, this is no problem playing it on this, but I just wanted to show you anyway. Another thing I've noticed, like the audio quality of this thing is pretty damn good and also it goes very loud. It 
Get the fuck out of my way. Asshole! I need some road rash! So when you're pressing the tiny button over here, we're going to have like the option to make a quick load, quick save. And what you can see over here, we do have like 10 empty slots for every single game, what I understand of. Pressing over here, we go and get into the native. Let's say the back end here, you can even like mess around with it with the region. And if you like need to do some extra things like adding some cheats, everything is possible with this device and the stock software. But okay, so what you're going to get with Game Boy Classic, I think this is absolutely epic. So this handheld is it's absolutely cool. Like when you want to play some old school games, the resolution and the screen is great. What is a pretty damn neat feature when you go into the native menu, we can even like mess around with the options. For example, you can show the FPS, but it's not like something I wanted to show. Let's say you put this scale on 1.5. So what you're going to see over here, we're even going to get ourselves a bezel. Let's mess around it with some more. Mm, let's see what happens if we're going to put it on the non, for example. Let's put it on there. Let's see what happens then. So here you can see like, I don't know if it's going to be like the ultimate way. I think the best way to play is just have like a full screen. And I love it that you can just mess around with this. All right. I think this is just the most epic way to play. So let's play. I must say this game is really difficult. Alright, so next up let's play some Game Boy Advance. Alright, so next up I want to try some Mega Drive. I think this the handheld is absolutely amazing for let's like, say this basic games, personally the stuff that I mostly play. Think about I saw up to PlayStation 1. But out of the box I think this thing has an amazing performance. And it looks amazing on this beautiful display. Alright, so next up let's try a Super Famicom game. I must say like I'm flabbergasted by the audio quality of this tiny handheld. Absolutely amazing game. Plays amazing also all this device. Yeah. But okay, so let's push this device to the limit. And let's see how it runs with some second. Because this is absolutely one of my favorite games to play. And on this display with the special ratio looks absolutely amazing. No stretched up weird stuff going on. Alright, so this was not really a package from China, but it was an Evercade VS and I must say I have this thing laying around for a month in my storage because I could really couldn't get to the review somehow, but I really liked it after making the review. And I will do also a quick recap about this product. I bought the Deluxe Edition, so this means we're going to get with two controllers and extra games. And the idea behind it is something unique. If you love collecting, you want to buy physical games, this is just one of those ways you can go to in 2022. And of course, maybe in different years too, because they are like keep releasing new games and new cartridges. Of course, with the cartridge it comes with a downside that we do have like games that we don't like because it's more like this mini multi-game card. Some will have only two games, but some have like multiple games, all kinds of licenses. It's quite interesting. It's absolutely crazy if you think about what we can play. So let's uh, see what we're going to get in here. 
let's unzip it and let's unseal it and let's unbox it. All right, so let's see how we can remove the system. So the first impression is quite positive. This thing is quite heavy, but let's take a close look at it later. So let's see what we can find at the bottom part. So maybe I've noticed that like we do have like different colors. So what I think is pretty damn awesome. So here we have like the red versions and the red version, I don't know if they're going to continue or this is not something like this is for the game system or just for the handhelds. I understand there's like an, like different series or something like that. I don't know what they're going, what they're going with this and if they're going to get more multiple colors, but I personally really like the blue one or this purple bluish color. Again, like a completely new collection, Data East Arcade. So I'm very excited to get some more arcade games on the system. Let's take a close look at the cartridge number two. And here we do have like some familiar ones for me, like Double Dragon, like a lot of interesting collections. But so here you can see we do have like Double Dragon 2, Double Dragon 3, but I don't see Double Dragon 1. So it's kind of weird in my opinion, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't spoil the fun. All right, so let's do this in unboxing of these separately. And let's also play some games today. And let's test out some old cartridges. What's inside in here? Here we're going to get, of course, the other parts and other things that we're going to need. Oh, all right. So the first thing that we're going to do, smell the metal. Wait. Ah, I love the smell of new stuff. So it comes with a basic explanation, but nothing really interesting. So we do come with two controllers. And I don't know if it's going to be very easy to find these controllers in the future. But the controllers are kind of, an, let's say, mix for me. Like... When you're looking at the shape, they are quite big. So I think for everybody can play with these. We do have like all kind of function keys. We do have like four shoulder buttons and of course four front facing buttons. So I don't know what they are going to release, but let's say if they want to release on PlayStation 1, for example, and yeah, they will have the option and all the buttons. So the D-pad itself is more like the floating D-pad. Sounds kind of cheap. So I'm curious like how it is going to play. Select start and then a button in the middle. But the touch of the button is very nice, like the original handheld. But that's basically what we're going to get. I really like the style. And uh, maybe in the future we'll pick up some action controller because I wanted to play some four play games on this thing. Another thing what we're going to get are the micro USB for the power, but there's no power supply whatsoever. And there is no HDMI cable. No, nothing at all. Another thing I really like about the controller itself, it comes with an extremely long cable. Do you know what I'm curious about if they're going to release, let's say, wireless controls in the future? Let's take a close look at the system. The design itself, I think it's more like a personal taste. I personally like it. It's very stylish. But the thing that I like the most is that we do have like a dual setup cartridge. I personally never seen this before and that makes this thing very unique. So I don't know what's about with this valve or this, this cover. I'll show you that I'm quite afraid that we're going to break something off. So it's it's not like say very flimsy plastic, but if you accidentally drop it and it falls on the wrong place, it will definitely break. But they should like make something like an, an like old school Super NES Mega Drive where you can just stick him in at the top. But beside that, I really like it. We do have the on and off switch over here at the front four USB ports. At the bottom, we do get these nice rubbery feet, and at the back, we're just going to get an HDMI. We're going to get ourselves a button over here and then the input micro USB for power. I'm guessing it's around 5 volts. But let's give myself like the weight scale because I wanted to show you how heavy this thing is because it's heavy. All right, let's put it on the weight scale. So this thing weighs 471 grams and I can say like that is quite heavy for a tiny reto beast. But first, I wanted to check out and unseal the cartridges. Already did unsealing, sorry guys. But so the first cartridge I got is the one with the double dragon game. So let's unbox this one. Is this, do I get the feeling the manuals are getting smaller? Let's take it, no, okay, no, no, there's something that was just in my mind. So let's take a close look in here. What are we going to get? And the first thing, and this is the most important thing, smell the paper. Yes, I love the smell of new stuff. All right, so the Double Dragon 3 is over here. And like the old school style, we go and get some very nice screenshots. All right. And explanation of every single game. Ming 
Minky Monkey. I've personally never seen this game before, so also going to be an adventure of rediscovering new games. That's another thing I really like about it. Okay, so let's take a close look at game number two. Let's see what we're going to get in this. No, I'm not going to smell it if you wonder. I've smelled enough now. Burger time. <laughs> yeah, I can still remember I played it on NES. Bad Deuce, same story, NES. Gate of Dooms. Okay, that's pretty damn cool here. You can see it like the arcade cabinet is at the left. Even with some, you know, some information like year released, 1990. It's a beat em up, one to two player. But this thing has some four player configuration. I'm curious, like, what kind of game? Because this is a two player game. That is a two player game. So most games will be one or mostly like two players. So don't know how we're going to do that in the future. Sly Spy is another wicked game. I can tell you that I've played that on the Ed Games arcade machine, if I recall it correctly. So yeah, so a lot of cool games. I'm curious about this. So let's plug these bad boys in and let's see what we're going to get. Still very interesting that we have like two freaking cartridges that we can put in a machine. A machine from the future. All right, so let's plug in the bad boy. See, this is what I mean. Okay, so click mechanism to stay it open, but this feels so cheap. Let's plug in the cartridges. Oh, that goes in very sturdy. Next thing we need to do is power on and hold it for, I think it was 1.5 seconds. And you can see the front part lights up. All right, so nice. everything seems to be working. We're going to get ourselves the intro screen of the Evercade. Versus or VS. Alright, so let's set it up. The first thing we need to do is choose the language. Let's choose English. Welcome to VS. Okay, we do have option to set up the Wi-Fi. I'm going to skip it because I don't have Wi-Fi connectivity over here. So let's just press the skip. Connecting your Evercade VS to the internet makes it easy to keep every day up to date. Yeah, I know, but I still want to skip. Ooh. And you need to agree to the Blaze Entertainment Limited and user license agreement. But okay, so let's take a close look at the menu itself. So there was one interesting particular thing that I really like about it. So the first thing is like it's very easy going, which you can see over here. You can just basically show your game and just click on it and just play if you want to. Here you have like the option to less save point. So with some explanation, so they did just an amazing job over here. Another feature I like when I'm removing one cartridge, over here you can see 18 games. When you're going to remove it, it shows eight games. So basically you don't need to mess around with it, like saying, oh, I need to go to the other part or another like multi-game card, mess around with it. Nope, it's super easy to switch games. Basically add your cartridge, it will update your game list. And that's it. That's pretty damn easy. But let's take a close look at the settings. At the left, we do have the option to, to go to the settings and that we're going to do. But yes, I'm going to show you what is even optional with this device. Another thing I really like about this device is just the settings. Just things that you can change out. So let's talk about that first before going to play some games. So you have like the aspect ratio, something that you don't see often with a lot of systems. We have original ratio, pixel perfect and full screen. With the shaders and scan lines, we can just put it on none. We do have like scan lines that are so very subtle, but also having lights very strongly. The same goes for bezels, we can just put it off, have like a black screen at the end, but you can just have the VS, Evergate, Origin, wireframe, and we can just change it out. And the same goes for scan lines. If you like scan lines, you can even turn that one on. So when you're looking at it, I like it. I like the way you can change things out. We can change out the theme. I really love the black theme, but we even have like light and versus. We can change out the music and the sound. We have the network that you can set up over here. So here we do have like a lot of options. You can change out fairly easy. So you can see like mine's still on the old firmware, but just wanted to see what's out when it, how it was when it was just out, out there. We even have like the option for the secret code. Let me know in the comments. What is the secret code? Did I look it up? I'm going to do what I want to hear from you. Did you found the secret code? A word for risk. All right, so the first game I just wanted to try is some Double Dragon. Uh, I do notice like I see that there is quite a difference between audio levels. I found like say the main menu sound pretty damn loud. I'm getting my ass kicked by this game. Like the first the first try 
Okay, when pressing the tiny button in the middle of your controller, you do have the option to do a quick save, quick load, change out the controls, and even mess around with the display settings. If you want to have like a full screen, we can go all the way like that. Oh, it looks awful, but okay. You can change it out if you want to. Let's go back to this freaking setting because, oh man, I cannot look at this anymore. Origin, yep, thank you. Okay, so let's take a close look at this game. I did play it on my Ad Games arcade machine. Pretty cool, you have some arcade games. The D-pad is very responsive, something I really like about this. Alright, so next up, let's choose a ninja with this game. I personally never played this game. Okay, so only thing I can do is like shoot shurikens, that's it. Everything kills me in this freaking game. Yep, absolutely. Alright, a game I wanted to try from the card, which is Darwin 4708. So let's see how this game actually plays. A shmup from 1986. Two player. Oh! So basically this is a vertical game. I must say that I think there is no way of adding rotation to to this video game and the monitor itself, that option. So next up, let's remove both of the cartridges. I really like that you don't need to reset the system itself. Let's plug in the one with Xenocrisis. All right, very good. Let's try Xenocrisis itself. Less safe. Then if I created a save file, the less time on my handheld. I think not. No, 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 no. Not at all. I love this game, but it is so absolutely different crazy difficult and I'm so crazy that I basically bought it on every single system on the Mega Drive on the Dreamcast but this port to the Evercade is absolutely amazing what I like about the control we do have like the A, B, X and Y that we can navigate or the way how we shoot and with the D-pad we just walk around I just wanted to highlight a couple of products here and I must say that when you're looking at all the products I've reviewed there are not a couple of them that I really like especially when you're looking at the Evergate VFs not really in package in China but I review so much stuff and I realize that there are so much crappy products out there or products that have so many issues when it comes to emulation performance or like quality issues and that's just the reason I love to make reviews just to show you what you get and warn you that something you don't buy it because it looks nice on paper, it looks nice on the picture but when you're going to get it you're going to be disappointed because you wasted your hard earned money. Sending back stuff is possible even with AliExpress but let's be honest you don't want that. You want to buy something that you really enjoy and I hope you have a better idea what products I personally like this month. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become one of the biggest family, and it will be great to see you in the next video.